Welcome back to class. I would like to talk about the ISLM model. And uh, in the first part, we have talked about the IS relationship. So we started in the following way that we had a look at the equilibrium conditions. Then it was a case that we uh, looked at the goods market equilibrium condition in a way that we uh, changed the interest rate several times in order to derive the IS relationship. The IS curve is a downward sloping curve in this interest rate income diagram. We also talked about the slope of the IS curve, derived the slope of the IS curve, and um, talked about those changes which lead to a shift of the IS curve. We talked about the horizontal shift and the vertical shift of the IS relationship. And this is the same procedure we have to follow with respect to the money market, the LM part. So we'll start at the equilibrium condition. Then it is the case that we are looking at different scenarios and we are able to derive our first LM curve. We talk about the slope, uh, derive also the slope in a formal way. And then we talk about shifts of the LM relationship, shifts of the LM curve once more in horizontal context and in a vertical context. And in the end, it will be the case that we will be able to derive this ISLM relationship in the interest rate income diagram. When we are at this point, then it's uh, once more time to stop the video. So now I would like to talk about the LM part. Let's have a look at the equations. Real money demand depends on this autonomous component, then one term which symbolizes the transaction motive, which depends on GDP, and money demand also depends on the interest rate, but there is a negative relationship between the interest rate and money demand because of this opportunity costs of holding money. In case that the interest rate is high, the opportunity costs of holding money are high, and money demand is low. Real money supply, uh, this is the ratio of nominal money supply divided by the price level. In equilibrium, it has to be the case that real money supply is equal to real money demand. In chapter four, we had a slightly different representation. There, it was a case that we put P on the other hand side of the equation and we were looking at the relationship between nominal money supply and nominal money demand. Here in chapter five, we just put the P on the other hand side of the equation and we talk about real money demand and real money supply. In a first step, let's have a look at some uh, numerical values. We will assume that the two parameters D1 and D2 are equal to one and 100. Uh, D0 is equal to 1000, Y is equal to 2000, M is equal to 2000, and the price level is normalized to 1. Then we get to this relationship here that the money supply curve, real money supply, is once more a line, a vertical line, at the value of 2000, and the money demand curve is downward sloping. There is a negative relationship between the interest rate and money demand. In the first scenario, it is the case that the equilibrium interest rate is equal to 10%. So in the black scenario, the interest rate is equal to 10%. Now we are going to vary G GDP several times. In the black scenario, it's a case that the GDP takes a value of 2000. But what happens if GDP decreases to the level of 1,500. When GDP decreases, then also money demand decreases, the money demand curve shifts to the left, and the new equilibrium is here found in the green dot. So when the GDP level is at the value of 1,500, then the corresponding equilibrium interest rate is equal to five. What happens if uh, the GDP de increases to the level of 3,000? Then we are in the red scenario. 
the money demand curve shifts to the right and the interest rate increases to the level of 20%, which is like the red scenario. And now we can use these three different scenarios, the black one, the green one, and the red one, and transfer these three dots in an interest rate income diagram. So we started at the uh, black dot here, where the GDP level was equal to 2000, and the equilibrium level of the interest rate was equal to 10. Then we switched to the green scenario, where the GDP level was equal to 1500, and the corresponding equilibrium interest rate was equal to 5. In the red scenario, GDP is equal to 3000, and the corresponding equilibrium interest rate is at the level of 20. Now that we have these three dots, we can uh, draw a line through these dots and we get the first LM curve. The slope of the LM curve is given by the ratio of 10 over 1000. When we go 1000 step to the right, the curve goes 10 step upwards. So uh, the slope is 10 over 1000, the slope is a positive 0 0.01. Once more, um, we can go here like 1000 step to the right, because then we are able to infer the slope from the graph. When we go only one step to the right, then the curve goes 0 0.01 step upwards, we would not see that in the graph. Therefore, we are augmenting this relationship so that we can see and derive the slope from the graph. The next step is of course that we want to confirm the slope of the curve, the slope of the LM curve by a formal analysis. Um, therefore, we are taking this um, money market equilibrium condition, we are computing the total differential, and we are interested in the relationship di dy. So we have to set this one equal to zero, that one equal to zero, that one equal to zero, because of the fact that money supply, the goods prices, and the autonomous component do not change, so that the changes are equal to zero. In the next step, we can also put this minus d2 di on the other hand side of the equation, and pops up with a positive sign in equation 22. In the next step, we can divide by dy. So we are dividing by dy, putting this on the other hand side of the equation. And we are also dividing by d2, so that we result in uh, equation 23, the slope of the LM curve is equal to the ratio of the two parameters dy over d2. Uh, the, both parameters are positive, so that the whole expression is positive, and the LM curve has a positive slope. Well, let's plug in the numbers we have. d1 is equal to 1, and d2 is equal to 100, so that the slope of the LM curve is equal to 0.01. Until now, we have derived one characteristic of the LM relationship, that the LM curve is upward sloping. The LM curve has a positive slope. In the next step, we would like to examine what, what kind of factors will cause a shift of the LM curve. What happens if the one or the other variable changes, in which direction will the LM curve shift? So we'll talk about the shifts of the LM curve. Here in this diagram, uh, we can see on the one hand side, the green, black and red scenario, where we have different levels of the income. We used uh, this part uh, of the graph in order to derive our first LM curve. But we can also use this graph in order to ask the question, what happens to the LM curve in case that money supply is reduced? In case that money supply is reduced from 2000 to the level of 1500, 
it is the case that the interest rate increases. So um, when we are in the black scenario, in the black scenario, it is the case that the interest rate increases from 10 to 15. When we are in the green scenario, uh, the interest rate increases from 5 to 10. And in the red scenario, the interest rate increases from 20 to 25. From this slide, we get the information that when the central bank is decreasing money supply by 5,000 units, then it is a case that the LM curve will shift upwards by five units. And this is what we see in the next graph. We can see here this uh, green dot and this light green dot, the black dot, and this black dot here, this light black dot. And it's a case that the LM curve shifts vertically five units upwards. But we could also argue that this dot here shifts like by 500 units to the left. Like we can once more talk about the horizontal shift or the vertical shift. Let's find out and determine the factors which um, determine the degree of this vertical or horizontal shift. First, we will switch to the scenario where we want to find out the horizontal shift of the LM curve in case that the central bank decreases money supply by 500 units. Horizontal shift implies that we want to know by how much does the LM curve shift horizontally and horizontally implies that the interest rate does not change. The interest rate stays at the level of 10, so the change in the interest rate is equal to zero. DI is equal to zero. Once more, we start with the equilibrium condition, we compute the total differential, and then we have to think about what kind of variables are constant. Money supply is not constant because the central bank it decreased money supply by 500 units. Goods prices are constant, therefore the change in the goods prices is equal to zero. Also, the autonomous component is uh, constant, so that the change in the autonomous component is equal to zero. And we are talking about this interest rate level, that the interest rate is equal to 10. So di, the change in the interest rate, is equal to zero. So the last term also drops out. We are left with the relationship one over p dm is equal to d1 dy. We are interested in the ratio dy dm. Therefore, we have to put the dm on the other hand side of the equation. And we also divide by d1 and put d1 on the other hand side of the equation. Hence, we get that uh, this expression is positive, and this has to be interpreted in the following way. In case that the central bank increases money supply, GDP has to increase so that the equal sign holds and the LM curve has to shift to the right. But in our graphical example, it is the case that the central bank is decreasing money supply and therefore the GDP level has to decrease so that the equal sign holds and the LM curve shifts to the left. This positive sign here indicates that there is like a positive relationship between these two variables in case that the central bank increases money supply GDP has to increase so that the equal sign holds and the LM curve shifts to the right. In case that money supply decreases, then also GDP has to decrease so that the equal sign holds and hence uh, the LM curve shifts to the left. Now, when we plug in the numerical values we have, we can think about the degree by how much has the, the curve shift to the left or to the right. When we plug in the numbers, we get the result that the ratio dy dm is equal to 1. And this implies that when the central bank increases money supply by one unit, the LM curve has to shift to the right by one unit, 
in case that the central bank decreases money supply by one unit, then the LM curve has to shift by one unit to the left. In our graphical example, it was the case that the central bank changed money supply by 500 units and therefore the LM curve also has to shift by 500 units to the left. And this is what we can see here in this graph. The LM curve shifts horizontally 500 units to the left. Now we have to think about the vertical shift. We know the result already. The vertical shift should be equal to plus 5. But we will also derive this relationship formally. So on slide number 29, we once more start with the equilibrium condition. We compute the total differential. It is the case that the central bank changes money supply and we are interested in the vertical shift. And on the vertical axis, we have the interest rate level and therefore we are interested in the ratio dm dy di. It is the case that the term dy is equal to zero because when we have a look at this uh, vertical shift here, it is the case that the GDP level is at the level of 2000. GDP does not change when we shift the uh, LM curve upwards and therefore it is, it's the case that the change in GDP dy is equal to zero. So we set this one equal to zero, that one equal to zero, that one equal to zero. We are left with this relationship minus d2 di is equal to one over p dm. Now we put this dm on the other hand side of the equation and also this minus d2 on the other hand side of the equation. And we get this relationship here di dm is equal to minus 1 over p d2 and this is negative so it's smaller than zero. How do we have to interpret this relationship? We have to interpret this relationship in the following way that when the central bank increases money supply the interest rate has to decrease the LM curve has to shift downwards like there is a negative relationship between these two variables. In case that the central bank uh, decreases money supply, then the interest rate has to increase and the LM curve has to shift upwards. By how much uh, will uh, the curve shift upwards? Like we have to plug in the uh, values we have, uh, P is equal to one, uh, D2 is equal to 100. So uh, this relationship is equal to a negative 0.01 and this has to be interpreted in the following way. When the central bank increases money supply by one unit, then the interest rate has to decrease by minus 0.01 unit so that the equal sign holds and the LM curve has to shift down by 0.01 units. But here it, it's the case that in our example, the central bank decreases money supply by 500 units. And therefore, when we multiply through the minus 500 by the minus 0.01, then we learn here that the LM curve shifts five units upwards. And this is what we see in this graph. On the last slide of this subchapter, it's a case that once more we have the general definition. Like one equilibrium curve shifts if one variable changes, which is included in the equilibrium condition, but which is not displayed on one of the two axes. Therefore, the LM curve will shift. The LM curve will shift to the right if nominal money supply increases, if the prices decrease, or in case that the autonomous component of money demand decreases. So we have um, talked about the first part. We have derived the IS curve. We also have derived the LM curve. And now it is the case 
uh, that we can determine the equilibrium level of the interest rate and the equilibrium level of GDP in one model, like in one graph. The ISLM model is able to determine two endogenous variables simultaneously. The interest rate level is at the level of 10% and the GDP level is at the level of 2000. This is completely different in chapter three. In chapter three, where we deal with a good market, it is the case that we only have one endogenous variable, which is the GDP level. In chapter four, where we deal with the money market and the financial markets, it's a case that we can determine the interest rate level. But here it is a case that we can determine two endogenous variables simultaneously. And this is a big step. So you need some time to digest. I'll make a stop here. See you again in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.